Hello everyone, good evening and welcome back to round four of WOR Tier 3. We are here at the Red Bull Ring amongst the Styrian Hills. And unlike last week, we have a full grid this time out. It's going to be an absolute cracker here today. Alongside me today is not Zach Oates. He could not make it tonight. I know many of you will be tuning in for him, but uh, I, am, I am delighted to say that uh, it's QBR20J alongside myself this evening. How are you doing, mate? All right, yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Looking forward to, to this one. Obviously, if you guys have missed uh, the previous week of action, we were at Russia last time out, where, to my surprise, uh, Cheetah did not turn up in that race. So, TTM Caesar, all he had to do was win the race to w take the championship lead by a single point. What did he go and do? Win the race and take the championship lead by a single point. So, now, at the top of the standings, it's TTM Caesar, the Dutch driver, 51 points. Cheetah, despite taking back-to-back -back wins in Belgium and at Imola, now falls to P2. Flying Rossi after back-to-back -back P2s as well. It's just five points off the championship lead as well. It's getting super tight at the top. And, well, assessing the Red Bull ring then, Jay. What do you think of the circuit? What do you think uh, the chances are that we're going to see some great racing today? Well, more with the OS zone, obviously. It's going it's to be just a massive DRS strain throughout the race. Because, um, just the nature of the track. So many strains of DRS, it's going to be hard to keep up, it's going to be hard to overtake if you're in said train, unless you're in P1 and you're going to get swamped, but obviously with the quality of this grid, I reckon the racing will be very good here. I can't wait to see. Yeah, it should be good, like you say, and obviously we've got the action zones, turn 3, turn 4, even turn 1 as well, if anyone's going to be brave and get their nose up the inside at the uh, Nicky Lauda curve, as you all know, named after the late great world champion. But at the moment, we're seeing jam pancakes on that. We're seeing many drivers go out there for their first attempt. It's 65, uh, 65 minutes. I was going to say 65 minutes. 63 seconds. I don't know why 65 and minutes came to mind. But 63 seconds is a lap round here. Welcome back, of course, to Jam Pancakes, who got that very unlikely podium in Belgium. He makes his second appearance of the season here today. Bit of a non-intentional toe there from Steve as he pulled to the right-hand side. We're seeing medium laps in nice and early from Caesar, the Humperdinck, and Limp Jet. Cheetah to the top, the second-place man in the championship. Only a tenth clear of Caesar on the medium, though. Yeah, perhaps leaving himself a bit of time in that one. And Jam Pancakes falling victim of the turn six invalidation. Alex to the top, then the Spaniard in the Alfa Romeo. He took um, he took a very nice result last week, despite uh, lagging all over the place. P4 in the end. That that also seemed uh, a very unlikely. Uh, result for him but seems like he's found his form he's not notoriously been known for finishing many races across the last two seasons in WOR but hopefully that gives him that spring in his, in his step to advance and pick up even greater results KTFE Kevin is next to cross the line DRS open then for the Haas driver crossing the line it's a 1 minute 4.2 within the mix there just about pipping his teammate to P7 at this moment in time but Kevin as the reserve driver today amongst this full grid will again be uh, hoping to show what he's made of. He yeah, obviously relatively good time for Kevin because he had to give 4 2 runs due to invalidate in the first run and he's quite close to the rest of the medium runners and say I can previously see why he would end up at the end of the fourth competition. Times are looking very close. Absolutely. Yeah, um, especially with the medium runners. I think there's still more time in those soft laps. And hopefully when we get to the end of the session, obviously it's such a short lap time, the the intervals between the drivers can be so unbelievably close sometimes. Hayne and Cass round at the final corner next to cross the line, and it's a 4.5 for him. He's the slowest of uh, the drivers that have done laps on the medium so far, but no need to worry about that at this stage in the session. Steve F1 is out there, 15.8 in the first sector. Just in front of him is Adam Dude, currently on the soft tyres. And, well, he's been uh, notoriously known this season for uh, some of his contributions to the races. Don't forget his uh, accident in Imola. 
By contributions, we're talking points with team or safety cars, because I don't know much about this here. Um, yeah, not not necessarily points at this moment in time. Back-to-back uh, -back DNFs in the last two races. And, of course, he contributed to that amazing last lap last season. Again, you might not be aware of it. Um, I did uh, leave a quote tweet to it um, a day or two ago in the build-up to this. But Adam Dew crossing the line on the soft tyres. It's not great at this moment in time. P10 on the soft tyres. Perhaps he backed out uh, in one or two corners there. Wasn't quite on my heels in terms of paying attention to that one. NUFC Ryan crossing the line must have been invalidated. No lap time on the board for Flying him. But next up, third place man in the championship. Flying Rossi. And he goes up onto the front P2. row. Wow, only 0 0.004 separating him and Cheetah. So, laps are looking very close after the initial round of laps for both pair here. But Cheetah is out on another set of softs and will be starting his lap very shortly. Yes, at the moment in time, the first, second and third place drivers in the championship are currently in a different order of course sitting second third and fourth cheetah will be looking to change that and aim high here as through turn one he goes fourth gear very nice exit climbing the gears now up the hill he goes towards turn two the small kink and then the heavy braking zone of turn three where he's found time crucially in that all important first sector but it's a horrible exit to the third corner lot of oversteer and I think he'll be waving this lap goodbye. Unless he continues to try and pull time out where he might have lost time in the final lap, but it does look like he has backed off. Yeah, definitely you can hear it in his uh, short shifting. Uh, but TTM Caesar is out there as well and it's almost one and a half tenths up here. And as it stands, that would be good enough. Almost. He just needs to find a little bit more time, but certainly he's got the front row in his sights, but he runs wide at the final corner. He gets wide at that apex, but Caesar crosses the line, and I think that final corner has cost him at this moment in time. But it's not over yet. I Ten did, minutes to go. I did see him there. He, he had a massive slide at that final corner, which could have easily cost him a lot of time, intentionally. He did lose a bit of time through that slide, and it, that would have put him pole if he did not have that slide then, so... Ooh, heartbreak for Caesar there. Hold on. It, uh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Hainan has been disqualified for blocking the pit lane. And obviously I think he was trying to uh, mitigate some of that traffic going through. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Um, well, Hainan will start 20th and last in this race. Which is never, never ideal. But... Um, that, there's no change in that now, uh, but uh, Cheetah is still out there at this moment in time. He is a tenth up, so he's gone for back-to-back -back runs on this same set of soft tyres and is still finding time. And as it stands, this could well be good enough to put it on provisional pole. Bit hesitant into the penultimate corner. Now the tenth and final corner. The Humperdinck goes to the top. That's the first time we've really said that all season. And Cheetah to the line. It's not quite enough. But out of nowhere, the Humperdinck. F on Blackie. Pole, Blackie beats pole. it. Yeah. We're going to have now we're seeing the lap times tumbling. It's going to be one exciting end of this qualifier. I can already feel it here. The laps are coming in fast. And they are flying. Alex, who uh, held provisional pole. For a fair bit of time after the first runs, he's actually picking up a tiny slipstream from Flying Rossi. That could well benefit him. Flying Rossi will do everything to try and put the Spaniard off, but he's found a tenth as of the first sector. And bearing in mind that he's really just one corner, perhaps the most crucial corner on the track. That sets himself up now for the final two sectors. He'll be seeing that delta. Oh, he's wide at turn four. Might have salvaged some time on the exit, but it certainly wasn't ideal. Into turn six now. Picking up a bit of understeer. Careful not to invalidate. He's found three one hundredths of a second more. Riding some of that inside curb at turn seven. And be very careful that that doesn't spin you out. Now down in towards turn nine. Very committed there. Down one gear, down two, three gears for the final corner. DRS open for Alex. Is he going to go back to the top? Not quite. Ooh. Just may, minorly misses off P1 there. Well, oh, as we see, FRT Heaven round the exit of turn one. Don't know what he's doing there, but that is FRT Heaven. 
round, I believe he was starting a lap. Yeah, Heaven's not had a great start to the season by any means. No points to his name. Uh, and that includes as well uh, a DNF at Russia. So he'll need to start building and, well, just get something on the board this season. NUFC Ryan is on his way back into the pit lane. We're waiting to see what sort of pace he has. As with Jam Pancakes, who is now out there on the medium tyres. Not quite sure what he's up to. Certainly doesn't look like he's uh, at full commitment at the moment. And I don't think this lap time will mean all too much. I'm just getting an evaluation lap of the track call. Or... He's just exploring his pace in the mediums. I don't know. Laying down some rubber. We'll, we'll say that. Yes, we will indeed. Typical F1 and Harv, who both have best uh, laps on the medium so far. As, uh, who's that just... Uh, was that Alex setting another lap? I feel like that gap is a lot closer than it was before. No. I, I might be hallucinating that, but... Typical F1. The same gap. I saw a jump up the order. There could be one here for Tip Clef. One. Yes, it is. It's P6 for him. Half crossing the line now. Oh, it's... Oh, it was an invalidated point nine. So, that certainly was not going to be too high up the order anyway. No higher than P11. Only gaining one position there. Yeah, Harv, who had a very decent race in Russia before it all came crashing down. Uh, upon the safety car restarts that we had. What happened Just to need something. What happened on the restart for Harv? Oh, there, there was, well, there was two or three restarts for a start, and uh, I, just, I just remember contact. Can't remember who with exactly, but, um, yeah, his race, it was just one of those things, unfortunately. But there's been signs of improvement. I mean, Imola, he could could have put in the bin as with Belgium as well both absolute shockers but it's good to see that he uh, found something in his locker at Russia hoping that improves for him this evening the Humperdinck is he out there again yes he is let's go on board for the reigning champion down in towards turn four breaking just after the 100 meter board it's down to second gear rotating nicely not using uh, the curbs as much as he perhaps could have there but he is into turn six it's a nice bite through there. Straightens up the car nicely for turn number seven. And now turn eight as well. Again, just running a little bit wide. Now down in towards the final two corners. Oh, that was a cut. Oh, and he, oh, and he spun for good measure. That's a good job. That hasn't gone into a barrier. That was a high-speed spin for the Humperdinck. That looked good enough for a provisional pole, though. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but I believe it was Humperdinck who did lose the win at this here track last season by, I think, 0.15 yes. tenths? Yes, it was. I believe that was hampered by Adam Dude, if, I, if I'm correct. I'm not 100% sure. Yes, yeah. The exact uh, final lap I was mentioning not too long ago. FRT Blackie is out there, and he has invalidated... NUSC Ryan has invalidated in the final corner. Yeah, Ryan, it's not looking good for him. It's looking good for his Newcastle side, though. Three on the bounce. Not that that's in any way relevant. Technically it is, because of his name, but... Not that that means anything tonight. TMS Amaze. He backed uh, up at the final corner. He's backed out, yeah. Still improved, though. <laughs> Adam Dude is going again. He backed off his previous lap. Visual... I'm pretty sure it will have to be TMS Amaze that we're going to have to watch. No, he is... Oh, Adam Dude. Adam Dude. That was a slide and a half. Somehow we salvaged it. Good catch there. I did see that. And he is sick from someone's up. I don't believe there is anybody out for the extra time at the moment. And UFC Ryan invalidated again, but he's making his way back into the pit lane as we speak. Who's going to be first out there then? to start their final Cheetah. flying lap and I believe it's Cheetah. Now this will be a statement if he can put in the quickest time of the session. DRS open, jump pancakes on his right hand side. That was too close. That was too close for comfort. I would have not taken that risk personally. E.T. Liam retiring from the session. 
No points. Uh, sorry, eight points to his name after um, a P6 last time out in Russia. It was a decent day at the office for Alfa Romeo, him and uh, Alex. TMS Amaze is now retiring. Cheetah then, second Ooh. sector split. What's he got on the oh, table? He oh, he's wide and, and invalid. Does he have enough fuel? Does he have to time again? to go again? Yes. Does he have fuel? I think he might. He has the time. With Does it being he such have a short fuel? track, you often get a little bit too much fuel in, even on the medium, uh, me medium, uh, the lowest option. But the Humperdinck. Three one thousand stand the first sector. Alex has just started and invalidated his lap at turn one. So we're feeling we're sorry, we're seeing drivers succumb to the pressure. The Humperdink though has kept it valid through the first sector, which uh, may well have been a weakness. So you you, you, you never really know to be honest. Just a mob of Caesar here now, he runs up to the line. He is up on his time for sector two and he will go up to P three of the Almost to improvement, and he is in the same bracket as the pole sitters on time. And just wait to see whether he goes again. No, he is rounded on turn one. So I believe that would be Caesar's final, final time with a 1.103595. Round the final corner, co corner comes the reigning champion, and it's the exact same lap time as FRT Blackie. Five one thousandths of a second in the top three. Alex next across the line, but remember he's invalidated. Blackie is now invalidated. This could end level, folks. Flying Rosie is invalidated. Cheetah is off the track. Can anyone beat these matching lap times? Jam by Blackie and the Humperdinck. <laughs> Jam pancakes to the top. Don't you just love to see four. it? That was out of nowhere. What a, what lap. a lap. Out of Jam nowhere. Pancakes. Oh my god. God. Typical F1. I don't think it's going to be good enough for him. Round in the final corner. Yeah, he's weaving across the line. He knows it's not good enough. Limp jet in the gravel. KTFE Kevin has been able to go again. Will we see any uh, last surprises? Adam Du crossing the line. Going P13. That pushes Harvey uh, down another position Alex to P15. Alex and Alex up. has managed to go again. And he's got the final sector, plenty now, pole off of Jump Pancake. So let's see how around the final corner now. Bit of a slide. Not the best exit here on the line. Where to take pole? And he with P2. Oh! Ooh. A great effort from Alex. But I don't think anyone's got the match for Jam Pancakes. What a moment for the returning hero. We got his all laps over now, so that will be Jump Pancakes on pole. For the Austrian Grand Prix. Great scenes. Great scenes. Alex up in P2. And that's more like it. And we're really starting to see the best out of him. FRT Blackie up in P3 as well. Matching lap times with the Humperdinck, the championship leader, Caesar in P5. Second place man and two time race winner this season, Cheetah in P7. And the third place man in the championship, Flying Rossi, splitting the two. What a qualifying. It's indeed, obviously, it was looking all set for, I believe, it was um, FOT Blackie to claim pole, then laps from Alex and Pan Pancakes came out of nowhere and disapproved him. Wow. That was certainly that a shock That is a for great me. grid. A man that invalidated multiple runs at, at the start of qualifying just comes and blitzes the whole grid to go pole. So... What a lap from John Pancakes. Correct. There is the full top ten for you. All within three tenths of a second. That is the Red Bull ring for you. And that is why we're here, quite frankly. Nothing to do with the fact there's three DRS zones and it makes for great racing. I'm only here for the qualifying. I'll see you later. No, I'm joking, of course. But qualifying is always a massive bonus at the Red Bull ring. You know you're in for an absolute treat. It's come over a bit more cloudy in the hills, but I think we're going to evade the rain today, which is always a great thing. There's always a high risk at Austria.
Was there meant to be a break or they meant to ready up instantly? Uh, they can ready up instantly. I last time I checked that was not a rule, but it's always a good thing that we can uh, go straight in. Jay, how about you uh, offer us your predictions for this evening's race? <laughs> the grid is so close, I can't make our prediction, but I'm actually going to go with Humping to win. Oh. P2 will be Cheetah. P3, I'm going to go with Alex. Well, if the Humpstick does, uh, does, does, does get, get his uh, first win of the season, he can thank, thank you. you for your prediction. Um, but usually when I uh, ask commentators for predictions, they're never, they, they, they're never correct. Um, so apologies for the jinx in advance. But here is the strategy. Top 10 all on the soft tyres as they qualified. Everyone else having a free choice. Uh, and have gone for the mediums with the exception of Shizu Savoya who's gone for the, the soft tyres. Which is definitely not the right shout down there. But uh, who knows what he's been drinking. Let's be honest. Out of Tarun having the greatest qualifying here in Austria. With one, I don't believe set a run due to multiple mandations on one. Porsche got disqualified after I'm not sure what happened to him, but we need to see where him and Savoya can make up in the race. Yeah, I think uh, well, obviously it said for Hainan that he blocked the pit lane, which <laughs> obviously not dangerous. That he was just trying to. Well, it looked like there was a lot of traffic coming through turn one, and uh, had just gone ahead of him up on the straight. But yeah, he's got work to do, like you say. As has Ryan, who couldn't get a lap on the board. So why you're gonna get a rule set? The bottom three cars can none of them could get a single lap on the board, so it was to see what they can pull and potentially get further up the road from the end of the race, potentially even score points here at the Red Bull Ring. No points for qualifying, as we all know. Points available in the race. Twenty five for a victory. And will we see another new race winner crown today? We've had Cheetah, we've had Caesar taking the top step but this time it's jam pancakes on pole looking to spoil the party here we go then lights coming on ahead of the drivers five red lights Lights, Lights out, out and, and, and away, away we go. go. Alex has got much better launch than Pancakes. Alex into the lead before turn one. Blackie looking at the inside John Pancakes here. Does he stick the move? No, but John Pancakes runs wide and that is now Blackie up to second. John Pancakes not having a very good start at all. And it's going to get there quicker by Humperdinck. Going down into turn three. Horrible start for John Pancakes then. The Humperdinck now looking to get involved around the outside at turn three. Surely not. Yeah, he's just gone in a bit too deep there to make a move, of course, but never worth a risk on the opening lap. Flying Rossi still splitting Caesar and Cheetah. This is one, two, three in the championship. Remember, Heaven side by side here with typical F1. He goes up the inside of the Mercedes, and I think he's cleared him there. Squidge wheel to wheel with Steve F1. There's a yellow flag in the middle sector due to ETE Liam as Hainan's actually had a great start, as has NUFC Ryan, who clears Shizu Savoy as we speak. That uh, Alpha Tower is looking very mucky as we speak, so it looks like Savoy has been involved in the opening lap antics as well, but what a start from Alex. Wide goes FRT Blackie. Now he's under a lot of pressure from Jam Pancakes, who's straight on that overtake. Well, start off, we did get a little view of the collision at the, between the back pairing. I, I do oh. believe... Oh, and Jam Pancakes, I think there's been a nudge or something into turn one. He got a massive uh, tank slapper of oversteer. And off the track he went. And he's now all the way down in P11. Humperdinck appears to have lost out as well somewhere. So I don't know about the Humperdinck, but... I must have been a tap from the Humperdinck. Because obviously they were going... Uh, they were Side by side momentarily on the opening lap. The Humperdinck was the car behind. Oh, that might not go down too well. Two drivers that have already lost ground in this championship. Oh, Steve's round. Oh, Jump Pancakes is almost a bit of sleeve. And that is Jump Pancakes down even further. And he's round, and that'll be him down to Yeah, he's lead. round. Imagine down Awful. P17 or P16 now. Ooh. 
Ooh, from... An awful lap two for Jam Pancakes. Could not have gone any worse. But Alex will take it. Blackie will take it. That's uh, one less driver in contention at this early stage. This DRS is now enabled and Blackie is looking to close up as much as he can and start saving that battery as a result. Same applies to Caesar. But if a gap has formed, um, obviously with the Humperdinck and Jam Pancakes no longer with them. But still, we've got a we've got a nice train in the top nine. I just want to point out here, Payne and Cass, who did get to one qualifying, is now up nine positions. I could be looking to get P10 very soon. Payne and Cass is an amazing opening three laps. On the mediums as well, reverse strategy could come into play with uh, safety cars. Indeed, it could. When you see Hayne, be... Hayne and Cass down the inside, potentially turn seven, turn six. Can he get the stick move? No, he Ooh. can't. You have to back out from that one. And of course, NUFC Ryan is there as well. I think Adam Dews has got damage. He's going to be coming into the pits here. Hayne and Cass has got to go the long way round. He does so. He's mindful of the pit stop. And Hayne and then up into P10 at this early stage. But he's got... NUFC Ryan right on him, but I'm going to cut away from that as there's a change for the lead. Here comes FRT Blackie into the lead of the race, overtaking Alex, who obviously got the jump off the start. Alex could be set to challenge back if he can get the DRS on the car now, quick enough. Blackie seems to have got no straight on speed, potentially to keep position, and that will be Blackie, hot. Blackie, Blackie holding the lead at the exit of turn four. Caesar has closed up an awful lot as well, as has Flying Rosy and Cheetah starting to come into it as well. This top five looking like one of the most competitive races we're going to see all season. The Humperdinck uh, might well be in trouble for what he did. And FRT Heaven becomes the first retirement. That's on the exit of turn six. Could this cause an early safety car? I don't think so. I think they've let that one clear. That doesn't look like a big off from him there. Just on board with KTFE Kevin now as he comes around the corner. Yeah, that's a massive off from him. Lotto's got massive overcorrect himself from the overseer. I've got something to from the wall. I'm not sure, but that is actually the first DNF of this race. Here comes Alex. He's going to fight back straight away up the inside at turn three. He's not hanging around. Neither of them are on this Wednesday evening. Is Blackie now back in the slipstream? But Alex timed his move to perfection and keep the DR and keep sorry the DRS down into turn four. We've got a great race on. Indeed, we have. There's going to be the tenth battle for the lead. I can see it panning out because it's whole race. That's with a spin or collision between the pair. I can't see any of them put the foot wrong. And this looks like we've Probably one of the best battles I've seen in a long time. He can see the potential getting involved That's as well. A doubt. Yeah. Well, we see another switch for the lead as FRT Blackie sets himself up here. Got about half of his battery left. Alex just a little bit more. And the slipstream there. Blackie not opening his rear flap at this moment in time but surely he'll think about it on the exit as Alex gets a poor exit he goes to the left hand side does FRT Blackie will he get up back into the lead of the race we're chopping and changing every single lap but it's Blackie here on lap six that just about retakes it if Caesar could potentially got one on FRT Blackie and Alex but he did have a big surprise on the exit which could have been challenging because he's done I will look the ice race and he now still resides in P3 this is still bringing everyone closer together, though. The Humperdinck now involved. We've got a we've got a segregated top six here. We've got Spins and Tipple F1. They're side by side with Squidge, and I think Squidge had an off. And I think Adam Dude, oh, well, that's just him. Side by side with Kevin and a battle with Harv as well at this opening stage. They were switched onto the soft compound of tyres early on. Here comes KTFV. Kevin can't beat a bit of a battle for 14th place, especially when it's as uh, high octane as this. Harv has gone the long way round. He's just about kept the position without much of a fuss. And Squidge, I think he got damage. He speeds for good measure. This could be race over. Alex is going to lead back from FLT Blackie here. Caesar, he has indeed. He's a lot closer to the season making move now. 
I think the poor and exit. Blackie gets a horrible exit. Yeah, and Cheetah wheel-to-wheel uh, -wheel momentarily with the Humperdinck. And the Humperdinck really fancies his chances here. Will he go the long way round? He makes a lunge. Is he going to get it done? What a move if he can pull this off. Cheetah is still on his inside going through turn five. Ooh, but what a move from the Humperdinck. Humperdinck. Claiming that P5 at turn five. He got it done the hard way. But that could be hugely significant in his hunt for his first podium of the season. He has done the second podium of the season. He My has bad. done what Charlotte Kirk did. I got many other targets at Temple. Well done. Humperdinck. We'll see. Yeah, just to clarify, second podium of the season, not his first, as I said. Remember, he did manage to pick up that elusive podium. Oh, and Caesar has gone off. Going to interrupt myself momentarily. He's lost not one, not two, but three positions. The championship leader has had a mare at turn one. As back comes Blackie for the race lead. It just keeps going on. And Alex has got a superb exit. And he's going to come back at the Red Bull driver. Fine Wazzy now. Alex back up into the lead. And Fine Wazzy did get humbling on the exit of turn three. Humbling did go very wide. And he was actually allowed and wasn't to go through. The Humdick now in P4, just one position away from being on the podium as it stands. I'm noticing something. Not sure you are, but the clouds are coming over very, very quickly. Yes, I can see that indeed. We could potentially see mid race rain, or we'll fight with potential tip for another set of soft. Will the rain out, or do they know more than we do? They probably know more than we do in Gospel. So, we'll let them make the call with tyres and weather choices and whatnot. As we could potentially see another move for P1 going down into the hairpin. Broken equal exits now. Will Black get the move back into P1 off? Here we are, Fancy Alex. I think that's a yes. And he gets to the apex of turn three in front. But again, Alex has the DRS and he's using overtake as well. Is he going to repass here? It's just getting boring, lads. But I'm all for it. Blackie holds on at this moment in time. But Alex tries a little bit of a switch back. He can't quite get it done. But at this moment in time, who cares? May I add as well, Heinen Cass from P20 to P8 currently. And still the lead driver out there on the medium tyres as Jam Pancakes has retired. That looks to be on track. I mean, that, that's very strange. Uh, he's just called his race quits. In the middle of the track. I don't. That's unusual. Believe we can't bring on track to the loud either. I'm not 100 sure, but we have that with a dumb us. We'll see. We'll see. But the pole sitter got jumped. Not one, but two positions at the start. Had a uh, tap in the rear for good measure, and it all came crashing down from there. This time around, Alex isn't going for it into turn three, but it does mean now with a good exit. Out of the hairpin, he's going for the lead in towards turn four. Blackie in the middle of the track. Alex just has too much overspeed once again. And is anyone counting how many changes of position, particularly for the leads, we've seen in this race? It's never ending at the moment. They've been in the pair, each showing the strength of pace around the Red Bull ring. And it looks like the battle will continue on for many more laps. Potentially with Rosie Humping, Gito, and seeing it involved. Be a massive battle for the league at the end of the race if all keep it with no penalties. Coming towards the end of the soft stint. Ten laps down, and of course the laps in qualifying. So we'll start to see drivers make that call very soon. Again, the clouds are still looming. I don't think there is any rain imminent. But maybe we could just see a sprinkle towards the end of the race. But this is just me speculating. I really don't know at this stage. And uh, I think that just makes it a whole lot more exciting. As we're seeing this exciting battle continue. Blackie onto the overtake again. DRS open. He's chosen not to go for it at turn three like Alex did. But he's not going for it at turn four. Obviously, we should see most of the drivers hit. Let's run and let's see that. We can see any undercut. We can actually 
Muscle undercut from Michael Steven to fight a drum boy everyone here. Free to have a strikey player across the top six. Come pit window. Is anyone going to make that call on this lap? Not in the top six anyway, as it still stays so close. 1.8 seconds within the top six cars then. We complete lap 11 and move on to the third waypoint in the race. If that's even a thing you can say, but Blackie, it's raining. It's raining. Is it? The rain has arrived in the red it is raining. I can see it. Oh, it's raining. Oh, that's a good... I thought my eyes were deceiving me as it's bunching up into turn three with Alex getting a bit of a poor run through there and here comes flying Rosie for P2. Now that's a statement from the Brit who didn't really look like he was there to pounce but as the rain falls he finds that bit of extra confidence to make the move. Slice toenail, who cares? Well, this is just throwing, this is blowing the race wide open. Wow. Starting to get a bit greasy. Oh. Definitely not imminent for intermediates yet as Flying Rosie has a slight moment coming through turn nine. And as we start lap 13 now, question one, how long, how much longer can these soft tyres go? Question two, how much longer will it be before we switch on to intermediates? It's looking greasy out there already. Driver starting to struggle. One of them being Blackie, who's lost three positions and, uh, to his main rivals in this race. And he's, left, he's lost his left end plate. Oh. Yes, he has. You're spot on. Oh, hum Good observation. Hum -ba -dig. Hum -ba -dig. The Humberdig oh, oh. with an exit and a half. Not Alex or Roger to get any form of decent run through that corner which allowed Humperdin to get through on Roddy potentially now hunting down Alex. Can we see? And the top two in the championship side by side. Sorry to interrupt there but Caesar getting ahead of Cheetah side by side. They were and that's important that Caesar holds on there. Yeah that's all good. We'll see Humperdin into the lead from I believe he qualified in P4, P4, P1, can we see it, and will we get the one, just to be sorry, we can see the DRS stable in the next few laps, but he needs to get the move as soon as he can, as moves may left, be left possible in the rain, please see how you played Blackie has gone in, he's had to repair damage as well, don't forget, but here comes the Humperdinck, he's Making the move while he can. No, he isn't. He waits, but he goes down the inside. It was all part of keeping DRS. But there's contact between the top two. The Humper Dick has his momentum disrupted. He gets an absolutely shocking exit. And now he's wheel to wheel with good friend Flying Rosy. As into turn four they go. Flying Rosy looking to hold on to the P2 he just Ooh. lost. He's up the inside at turn four. He keeps the inside into turn five. This race oh, oh. just gets better and better. I don't think I've ever seen more, more than a 10 buckle for the P1 in my life. This has been great to watch. Oh my god. What a race to join me for. Yeah, indeed. Obviously got Here we go. We're starting to see the pit stops. The Humperdinck coming in. Oh, Caesar. I, I think he thought about it. But the Humperdinck takes the gamble. He's going in for Inters. Which is not having fun with the pilot account, but maybe he believes on 9 seconds penalty No, he's not. 11 seconds. May, may I also add, Hain and Cass, from 20th now to P5 and still gaining. What a stint and what a choice in the end to go on those medium tyres because he's just been able to gain and gain and gain and bring himself into this lead fight. As Flying Rosie has now taken the lead from Ali to... Uh, I believe might have had a moment at turn one because the gap has started to open up now. There's yellow flags continuously popping up in that third sector. That's probably where the track's at its worst. We're really starting to see drivers struggle now. And I think, you know what? The Humperdinck has made the best call here. Indeed, he has potentially him. He will take the lead and potentially get the win. That should have been last season, but wasn't. 
and how on earth Alex and Cheetah are keeping it wheel to wheel on slick tyres in the wet. I don't know, but Hayne and Cass looking to get involved. He's just keeping uh, NUFC Ryan at bay, but now we're seeing the pit stops. It's time for the intermediate. And Humperdinck, I think he's going to absolutely smash it out of the park with this strategy. DRS disabled. This this is a moment of genius for the Humperdinck. And you wonder why he's a three-time champion. It's calls like this. It's his brilliant racecraft. We'll, we'll ignore the slight tap earlier in the race. But it'll, this is why. It'll be some of Humperdinck. Was it out the pit? He's got him. Ooh, clear as day. But Flying Rossi has a good two seconds on Caesar. So that unleashes the Humperdinck and Flying Rossi to go at it for the race win now. Who could have predicted? Unbelievable. So just put it out Hayne and Cass. Now sitting P6 after off of P20. What sort of race Hayne is having? Woo! A squidge now leaves the session. Savoya, uh, I think, picking up a penalty there. As does Cheetah, and Alex gets one as well. So the rain falls. The penalties do too. And that could be very damaging to Alex and Cheetah's race. Currently, I think Humpton will win. He tries to be precision P1, so he can understand. As he is supposed to be pulling away ever so slightly, lap by lap. Pulling away in the corners, losing on his face. It does appear Humpenick is. I'm free to see whether Rosie will be able to gain or whether he'll be able to pull away from Rosie or Humpenick. But you can see by the interval times that Rosie is closing in on the straights but not really gaining in the corners here. Yeah, I think it's. Uh... Obviously, the racing goes a bit stale in the wet, but certainly the on-edge driving doesn't. And the Humberdink is nailing it here, extending that gap, relieving the pressure towards the end of the race. That will be his aim at this moment in time. Steve F1 getting ahead of typical F1. As it stands, Hayne and Castle will make the jump into P4 with these penalties, 20th to 4th. Not bad at the moment. He didn't race last week due to SRC. Uh, but the race before in Imola, that's when he last picked up a P4 finish. And as it stands, he's on course to do it again. Hainan, a king of comebacks at the moment. Yeah, I so. Obviously, he is driving a stellar race. Obviously, quite unlawfully qualifying in P20, something that wasn't his fault. And currently, by P6, but it was P4. He just keep this penalty free and. Be hung the podium if there was a collision between the top three, which looks very unlikely at the moment. We see what Hayne and Wilson the end of this race. Wow, he's having an amazing race. Halfway through, you said the Humperdinck to win. It was Humperdinck, Alex, and Cheetah for the top three, but I don't think that's happening. Yeah. You've got the Humpdink right so far. If the race ended now, if Massey waved the uh, the red flag, not only would we see the, the, the new uh, points rules, whatever they're doing, come into play for the first time, we'd also see the Humpdink crowned race winner. But obviously, there's not going to be a red flag, and we've still got half the race to do. So shut up about that. And see whether Alex can strike on Caesar or whether Caesar will hold P3 on track as it stands. That looks to like be the only versus battle for at the moment. Or because the NFC Ryan is very close to Blackie, he to get a move very soon. Or for wet race, they're very close. Most people all over the track have see moves by very few drivers, but that's our building now. There's a spin to the three and that's. I'm um, dude, that was round, round at 53, and does he have damage? No, he does not. He must be amazing. Well, this appears to be a nice battle developing between the potential battle between both William drivers as both of them are struggling. I'm going to see a nice battle between the teammates here. Hopefully, not they don't collide. That's not what they all want. 
in any hope for constructors if they manage to get into points come the end of this race. Indeed, and uh, just uh, working out the uh, standings very quickly, Caesar will maintain the championship lead as it stands, of course, being the uh, highest of the three main protagonists going to this, into this race. He'll be on 66 points. Flying Rossi will be just two behind uh, the Dutch driver uh, on 64, but Cheetah, as it stands, he'll finish P6 on penalties, so he'll be uh, a very mere 58. Not that that's a bad thing. I'm oh, full not discrediting. Car. Full course safety car! Is out at the exit of turn one. I was doing maths! And there's a safety car! Well, well, well. Grid bunched. That's what we like to see. Especially in these wet races. And those with penalties, i.e. Alex and Cheetah, Blackie, Ryan, Liam as well, all are going to feel the pain of this safety car. Because it bunches up and that leaves them at risk of uh, losing even more positions from their errors. The full course safety car, just as I was uh, reading out my little uh, point tally that I made. Full course safety car, Shizu Savoy are at the race for DNFs. 20 laps in. This has nullified the race completely. I can't say pumping for win this. I can't say who's going to win this now. So I want to do pumping for this prediction, but I can tell you who's winning this now. Who thinks they'll win it, Joseph? Oh, I, I do bet the humping to, to go on and win this still. He's got a great record from these sorts of situations when he finds himself no. dominating. dominating. So I still back him. And I'm just going to provide an update on Jam Pancakes. He said he had no force feedback and his controller kept overriding his reel. That might have something to do with the turn one moment he had. And the Humperdink, in fact, might have had to take avoiding action on that one. Because I didn't think they were that close. I, I feel like I was wrong to assume there might have been a tap tap from the but from the motion of the car I, I'm not I'm not too sure but yeah uh, clearly it was just getting too much in the end and the pole sitter jam pancakes has now retired and he did so on track before anything too bad happened is my presumption Whew, let's uh, digest for a moment So yeah, that was very unlucky for Jam Pancake. Obviously, he suffered a no ball, but the ball back or feedback issue, and he was on par whilst he was his best start. Could have become twice for feedback, and issues with his been getting worse and worse lap by lap. And obviously, it was dead for his on track retirement. But hopefully, we'll see him back next week stronger than he did this week. This car, Sorry about that. this car should be in this next lap. If Jack can catch up, which I don't think he can, but... I believe the should be fine. Gosh, it should be fun to go this lap. Yeah, I'm, if you just catch up, it'll be as this car is called. Cool, I'm saying. Well, if we do go racing at the end of this lap, we'll have 14 laps until the chequered flag. And we still don't really have a guaranteed winner. You never have a guaranteed winner in this tier. It's good to see it's all so close. Like, qualifying top 10 was come by three tenths and... Wow. And you look at the opening two races and you go, oh, season's good. Uh, not Caesar. Sorry, Cheetah. Oh, Cheetah's going to dominate every race. His Belgian was flawless and his Imola was flawless. Obviously, that uh, week out in, in Russia has left him a bit more under pressure in terms of the championship now. And obviously, I know there's been mixed conditions. I know it's Austria where qualifying is literally make or break by a few tenths, but. 
yeah, he's uh, a bit further down today. And that's allowed for a great race. Safety car is in this lap. The Humperdinck will resume the racing at his own accord. As he warms up those intermediate tyres on the slippery surface. In towards turn number nine. He waits and waits. And into the final corner. Oh, into the pits goes Cheetah. The Humperdinck has resumed racing and side by side already almost between Caesar and Flying Rosie. Alex on the outside as well. There's contact. He gives the McLaren a nudge going into turn one and it looks to go the long way round on Caesar who now tries to squeeze the Spaniard to the left hand side but he gets the run anyway and now tries to slipstream off the of Flying Rosie. Will he go the long way round into turn three? The Spaniard tries it the long way round. I don't think he's quite got the edge there. And no, he doesn't, but the Humperdinck waves goodbye to them. Off he goes into the distance, and Steve F1 makes his way up to fifth place. What, what a restart there. But what's going on with Cheetah? Why did he pit? I don't know, I'm just going to try to pit I'm... the pit stop quickly, see if there was a front wing, or... Well, yes. Good idea. That was front wing. He did have front wing guys from somewhere. Front wing. He must have picked it up on that restart then. He must have just got it all wrong. Must have daydreamed or something. Indeed. I like, yeah, I, I was going to say, there's no benefit to fresh intermediate tyres in this situation. But yeah, the Humberdink has gone. A perfect restart which led his main rival under pressure in this race, Flying Rossi. And now he's got to try and keep Alex and Caesar behind. ETE Liam, uh, one hour from out, having a good day. The other one, not so much. I don't know what, what has happened at all to ETE Liam. Obviously, he was involved in the lap watch planning and as many drivers were. And... Oh, three wide moment. Sorry to interrupt you there. But half fending off amazed and now fending off Hainan as well. And Hainan has only gone backwards on this safety car restart. He made such great progress in this race, but now he just seems to be massively on the back foot. Maybe he has damage. Maybe something's just not quite clicking with him with, with a balance in these wet conditions. But his medium stint was perfect. It looked like all of a sudden he could have been contending for the podium. But now, that is no longer the case. I don't know what happens if we start for Hainan there. And it was, I believe, within P6 in the start. But hopefully he can make it up to end this race. Maybe his tires weren't fired up at all. Or whether he just doesn't have a place in the work. Could be. Looking forward to seeing this battle resume though, it's not done here in this midfield. Not at all, is he the pit again? I believe he did get done. Oh, I say somewhere. that. Steve F1 and Blackie, I think Blackie sent it up the inside into turn three and now he tries to get back into the slipstream of the Ferrari but the lack of DRS of course. Oh, just oh he goes doesn't... down the inside anyway, that's a late lunge from FRT Blackie and it's a great move in all fairness, there was nothing wrong with that. But Steve F1 is not hanging around, going back up the inside at turn six, still wheel banging the two of them. And into turn seven, Steve F1 fending Blackie off beautifully. What a battle we have, are having in the midfield here. Central and UFC Ryan gets involved very soon as he appears to get them very racing on the intermediates. Which is content to see him making one back soon as he appears to have. Much more pace than Black and Black you pick up the and Steve, it's not happening in this case at all. Alex gets uh, a bit loose out of turn one. The Caesar now starting to close in and Alex just drops out outside of one second. Not that that means too much in the wet conditions without DRS, but obviously that slipstream is always handy thing to have. The Humperdinck still dominating 2.3 seconds after his incredible jump and strategy call into the lead of the race. An incredible safety car restart to go with it. It's been a perfect day in the wet conditions. Oh, 
crystal ball with that. that and half. There was a collision with, I believe it was the um, Blackie. Lucky. Yes. I think Blackie might have damaged. He, he is going backwards. Yeah, he does, 100%. And Hayne and Cass goes through. Adam Dude about to go through as well. It looks like it's on that right-hand side for FRT Blackie. And it's a shame to see his race come crashing down like this. He was one of the main front runners in this race. Oh, such a shame for FRT Blackie. Likewise with Cheetah well. getting damage. Oh, and typical F1 has cut the pit lane a bit and takes a penalty <laughs> as a result. But I don't think you're meant to do that. As the rain started falling, Company made the, probably the perfect traffic call and now it's season straying along in P1. Funny enough, I'm going on something here. He looks set to absolutely dominate and win this race. But if he doesn't, something must have gone horrendously wrong. He can have a Sunday cruise to the finish if he wanted to. Half and Steve. Credit to Harv. Ten positions gained. It looked like he was down and out just through qualifying alone. He's another driver that has made a superior comeback in this race. Remember, he went off the mediums onto the soft tyres. And now I understand it's because there was rain on the way. We really could have seen that a mile off. But it looks to me as well, this rain has got even heavier. It's coming down rapidly. And so, I'm going to pose the question... Oh, wet tyres inbound. Full wet. Or will someone break it out on the intermediate and finish it and hang on finish to get score high points? Exactly. This, ah, wow. This will be one massive probability now if the rain does, does get a lot worse. I mean, it, it looks like the conditions outside. If, if you're not in, U, in the UK at the moment and you don't understand, we, we've had like two storms this week and we've still got another one to come. So the weather has just been absolutely awful, as usual. We just get the worst of what everyone else gets, to be honest, as FRT Blackie picks up a three second time penalty. His race continues to unfold before his eyes. He's here, Liam, picking again. He's not having a very good race at all. He goes onto the wet. He's onto full wets, though. That's saying something. And we'll watch the... Could he be testing that out for his teammate? I lost the belief he could be. Indeed. We should watch the interval between him and the maze. It might be big, but we see if he does gain any time on the maze's head. Watch the interval closely as we go on to watch. I think currently the, the closest potential overtake is currently. KTFE Kevin on at the mood. Oh, Adam Dude goes off the track, takes to the bumpy sausage curb, and well, that overtake was far easier than first anticipated. KTFE Kevin then up into P9, and he's gained three positions in this race. Adam Dude has still gained four, Hainan up 12, Ryan up 12, and Harv up 10. Steve F1 as well. No ignorance to his drive. As Cheetah oh, and Typical are the next two drivers to pit for wet tyres. I think that's saying something. I think the full wets are now quicker. Who will brave it out on the Inters with seven and a half laps to go? But who will take the gamble on going on to full wets? I really can tell you who's going to end up where here as I would like to have through this. Currently simmering about standing and a forced to gap between himself and want to hear whether he will break out on the intermediate or the will choose to go to where. But it doesn't look like he will stay on the meet on the intermediates, but let's see how it pans out along the end to the end of this race. I think it's much oversteer the previous signs are showing the wet are getting quicker and I'm just gonna have to will now try to break it out. As the grid, as, the, as P2, 3, 4, and now 5, I blink. 6 and 7 are closing up a lot more now. Oh, half of Steve again. He's going to move back here to P5. The half of a great recovery drive after taking up damage on P1 of the box. 
Blackie. FRT Blackie has gone around and fortunately he hasn't retired otherwise that could have caused all sorts of mayhem with a safety car um, with this current tyre situation yeah I see a lot of drivers struggling I'd be very surprised if someone does not take the gamble um, because that rain is torrential that is beyond red flag conditions what we'd see in real life it's looking impossible and a virtual safety car is deployed is that for radom dude or is that due to the conditions as flying rosie goes for it he's in ttm caesar as well the virtual safety car is providing a free pit stop here in these torrential rain conditions hello alex alex is right Despite being slowed down, Alex is running wide. It's definitely, definitely a sign there of is no way, There is no way you'd want to be on the intermediate tyres right now. No way. Agreed. Really agree with the director. These are, these are some of the worst conditions I've ever seen in a, in a, in a league race. But, will Flying Rossi's gamble pay off? He's got 10 seconds to meet the pack again. But I think at the rate drivers are struggling, he's got that in 3-4 laps. But there's not many laps left. There's only, what, four, uh, five and a half? Jesus, the drive car has been on the safety car. Oh, it's been a horrendous day for the second place man in the championship. Look at that from Mars and Kevin, it's going down second by second. All the time, yeah. Let's go on boards with the race leader. We'll see what he does here. And I reckon Flying Rossi may have the jump. If the Humperdinck was to pit here. Remember, it's a massive risk staying out. Oh, see, he is not and he does. Flying Rossi's already gained about three seconds. I reckon he could well have done it side by side into turn nine between Harv and NUFC Ryan in these torrential conditions. Steve, Steve F1 goes in for three. the gamble. I, I don't think it's a gamble anymore. I just think it's a sensible decision. I, I think, honestly, why would you want to be on intermediate tyres risking no points at all with one simple spin when you could be flying Rosie, pumping in laps five seconds quicker than any, anyone else? Drama. This could be actually God's thing from Rosie, or this could prove one call but that's why he's gaining rapidly essentially even challenge as Cheetah retires in the pit Cheetah retiring in the pit lane his race done flying Rossi I mean whether or not you agree or disagree with this decision this could pay off in terms of the championship if you don't feel comfortable on the intermediate tyres why would you risk throwing away championship points when you could be on the better compound and be potentially even gaining points as well, you reduce the risk of throwing them away, and you increase the risk of, uh, or increase the chance, sorry, I should say, of gaining them. It is now on the back Just of the, the look train. Just the look at the difference. P2, P2, P2. Mesmerizing P2. watching P2. the onboard. Easy. So easy for Flying Rossi at this moment in time. He's got P5 in his sights. He's got P4 in his sights. And he's got P3 in his sights as well. A brilliant town P2. one. Potentially. And then he's not lost anything in that case. And Caesar, who went onto the wet tyres as well. Now 1.2 seconds off Flying Rossi. And within this chase as well. Traction, all important here for Flying Rossi. You can just see the difference. It's incredible. Breezes and past Flying Rossi up to fifth. Breezes past Hayden Cass. Goes in a bit deep as well. He looks for the opening on in, on NUFC Ryan. Again on the traction. Oh, the difference. It's almost just satisfaction. Pure satisfaction. It is. It, it, it is. Another, another virtual safety car. car. Yeah, this is definitely due to weather. This could save oh, the day Caesar. for the Humperdinck. And Caesar must have had a scrape just as the virtual safety car came out. I think Hainan Cast is Hainan Cast is boxing. That is Hainan Cast in the box. Unfortunately, 
It's too late. I think that's a simple fact. He's going to lose all these positions that he had absolutely no risk of losing five or six laps ago. Can Flying Rossi still do it? The sa uh, Sorry, the virtual safety car really halting his progress here. I think this could well have saved the day for the likes of, of the Humperdinck and Alex as well. Indeed, it could have. The props to Hainan. This might not work out in the end, but Hainan also did not be funny. Both of them have to be fun. to have a great race, in, in my opinion. Still a great race, but unfortunately now it's looking like there's going to be no result at the end of it. 7.6 seconds flying, Rosie, between you and the Humperdinck. And perhaps one of the greatest strategy calls we're ever going to see in WOR. Here he goes for P3 and half. Well, he's not going to give it up easily, is it? He wants to protect this win for his teammate. And just look how slow he is. And this isn't even deliberate. That is just the pace difference we're seeing between the wets and the intermediate tyres. Two laps to go. 6.6 .6 seconds for Flying Rossi to find. Can he do it? He's the first pass Alex here. Then you dump everything. He's got so much to dump. And to be fair, as does everyone in this situation. He's had to stay behind Alex for the time being. But the exit is spot on. He's clear to chase. 5.2 seconds. And he's been gaining about 5 seconds a lap. I think, he, I think he could have him. If we don't see a repeat of Spa, he's got him. Surely. Six times in one corner I've seen there. That is mental. And it gets and it gets harder for the Humperdink as the rest of the lap goes on. Flying Rossi is one and a half laps away from overtaking the Humperdink and producing a strategic miracle in the Styrian Hills. 2.8 now is the gap. <laughs> what a race is gonna turn out to be. Will we'll Mozzie win this? Will Humperdink win this? I don't know. We'll see if I get back on the podium. Will Limjet? Limjet, who will even won? <laughs> Limjet. Limjet. He's going to have a podium. He has no wing on that bottom. He's going to have that. Oh, and Harvey's defending for his life now as well. And there's contact. And that could be. That is more wing damage for Limjet. So Steve F1 will fancy his chances. Right, right. Let's go back to the lead of the race. It's the <laughs> final lap. It's the final countdown, and it's the final opportunity for Flying Rossi to take victory. He's got a great exit out of turn one. He's deploying every single watt of battery power. I don't even think that's the right word. But into turn Humber three goes the Humperdinck runs Humber deep. Humber Humber Flying Rossi says thank you very much. P3 and takes the lead. Steve F1 makes his way up to P3. But the strategic comeback is complete. What a call from Flying Rossi. And if he doesn't, and I beg he doesn't spin out, I do not want to see a repeat of Spa. I do not want to drain all your ears in incomprehensible screaming. That's the last thing I want. And my fingers are deeply crossed for Flying Rossi, who makes it out of turn eight in front. And he's got two more corners to go. He plunges down in towards turn nine. He's got the freedom to take it at the speed of a London bus. And now into the tenth and final corner. It's a strategic miracle for Flying, Flying Rossi. Rossi. What a one. choice to make. Wow. What a race. Wow. Hey, and Kirk, get the piece Holy. Of it, man. How has he done that then? He was about 12th a minute ago. I don't know. But yeah, the penalties, obviously. Alex drops to 9th. Oh. But Flying Rossi takes the championship lead. By a long way. By a long, long way. Yep, yeah, I see As Caesar got damage uh, onto the virtual safety car after that contact. Neither top three getting points. That will be Rossi storming into the championship lead. What an end to the race. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Wow.
drive of the day they're going to Hayden Cass. Would you agree with that? No, I, I, I disagree completely. How can you look any further than Flying Rossi in this situation? I, I know he started sixth and he didn't gain the most positions, but wow. I'd love to agree with it, but I don't believe that Flying Rossi is a of the day from that amazing strategy called What a Strategy from him there. Wow. Jesus Christ. That's all I've got to say. Jesus Christ. Championship, Championship standings then are looking like Flying Rosy on 71. If my. No, yes. 71. And then Caesar stays on 51. And Cheetah stays on 50. Flying Rosy, make sure you've got your audio included. That could not have been any more perfect. Hands down, one of the greatest decisions I've ever seen in league racing. Thank you. Yeah, you have no words. <laughs> I, 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 it's just the game, but I'm knackered. <laughs> I, I don't remember a thing that happened that I whole race. I respect it. But I, I know Luke, I don't know if Luke had gone past the pit entry when the safety car, or virtual safety car came out or not, but I think he was very unlucky. But yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm interested to ask Luke about that, whether he was considering it, because... Yeah, yeah, obviously, the, the, the virtual safety car fell so kindly for you. Yeah, had he, had he gone past the... Uh, that definitely was the turning point. I think he might have. He had a, he had a big gap. He had about six seconds yeah. at one point. Yeah, I think it was uh, four and a half seconds or so. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'll take it. Also, see him in championship relief after that one. By 20 points. Ooh, that's cheeky. Yeah, yeah. I think all I did was just try and draw the mistake free race, so. Yeah. I think Luke definitely had a lot more pace than me in the work, so. I do think he was quite unlucky, but. I don't know. That's how it is, I suppose. Your season, Your season has only got better. better. Well, it started pretty badly, so. Right, it did start pretty badly. And you still finished fifth. Yeah, true. Yeah. I don't want to mention the C word yet in terms of championship, but I'm that is a that is a big statement, going twenty points clear. Considering that was cheetah two weeks ago. And you know, you you're never guaranteed to hold on to that, but how do you rate your chances now? Uh, I don't know really. I think, I think Peter didn't have quite as much pace as he did in the first two rounds today. Uh, I think if he had done last race, he'd have passed him a lot closer. But, uh, yeah, I think he's had some very good pace today as well, but I think he got murdered at some point. But, um, yeah. He did get damaged on the last final left, so I believe. Ooh. No, no, that was Caesar. Oh, Cheetah oh, got oh, Cheetah oh, got it under the safety car, the actual safety car. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, big, big mistake for him to make. Uh, be interested to see what he what he actually did there. But any last words from you, Jay, to to our race winner? Well done. Well done. I'd say amazing strategy. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I fully agree with you there. Well, let's, let's move on. on to Steve F1 then. For the That's first time this seat. season, we're speaking to him on the podium. Great job, mate. What a call from you as well. There is no denying that. P10 to P3. Finally getting that well-deserved podium on the board to show for your early signs of pace. How do you feel? I mean, I'm absolutely ecstatic. I, 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 the BSC come out, I saw Caesar come in, so I was like, I'll stay out. Uh, so I didn't want to do the double stack, even though I would have lost a little bit of time but I, I didn't want to I thought the inters would have stayed out longer and I thought the track wouldn't have been as wet and then I realised after the second VSD it was too wet I had to box on to the wets and then I just pushed as hard as I could to get past everyone really half put up a, a fight into turn three on the final lap but managed to get past him and yeah I just absolutely have the pace on the wets oh it was amazing one more race then before the break. That's Zanvoort. Another tricky track. Um, do you rate your chances there? 
I mean, it's not one of my strongest, so I reckon if I put a bit of practice in, I'll be decent at it. I probably could get a good result from it, but it's not one of my strongest tracks, so I'll, I'll, I'm not looking for a high result, just looking for points, really. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Jay, any questions for Steve? What were your thoughts on the rain when the rain got just increasingly worse? Were you, were you trying to brave out on the internet when everyone came for the wet, or were you still thinking for the wet as the rain got worse? I was originally thinking stay out on these interviews, why not? And then as soon as I started to feel a lot more acroplaning, a lot more sliding from my car on the traction, I just knew I sort of had to risk it and go for to box for it, really. There wasn't really much of an option, I thought. It was either that or just drown and start losing positions like the Inters did, the Inter drivers did, compared to the wet drivers. Uh, so it was, it was originally planned for me to stay out on track, but uh, yeah, I just knew I had to box and risk it and go see how high I can get up. And then it sort of helped with Limpjet getting defended a lot by Hove. Did he get a bit more damage? I believe he did. Yeah, because it felt a lot. He saw, I saw him understeering a lot more, so I just went for the move. And then Alex and Half were just sort of defending hard, but they were easy pickings really down the inside. I had the traction, I had the braking, so yeah, it was, as I say, it was originally planned to stay on the inners, but wets were definitely the right call. Yeah, well done to me after P and P three, but you didn't in fact be finishing on the podium. On P10, no, but it's there not. you are. What a race from you there. Well done. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you for your time, guys. What an absolute race to be a part of and commentate. My thanks to you, Jay, as well. Make sure you join us same time next week for the Dutch Grand Prix, where, I mean, we've had four races of pure drama. Hopefully, we'll have a fifth. Championship is still wide open, despite the 20-point gap. And... That's saying something about this season, isn't it? Thank you, everyone, for watching. But a pleasure having your company. And until next time.